the Zodiac Killer sent taunting letters, many including cryptograms, to the press. The BTK Killer mailed postcards, poems, and even packages containing his victim's jewellery and driver's licenses. In fact, his final gift of a floppy disk containing one of his letters is what led authorities to uncover his identity as Dennis Radar. It is not uncommon for a serial killer to contact the media, as many crave the spotlight, and becoming a pop culture celebrity can be the motivation for a killer to continue their murderous career. But what about when a journalist commits the murders and covers the news and cases themselves? Freelance journalist Vlado Taneski did just that. Taneski was born in 1952 in Kivetso, North Macedonia. It is documented that both of his parents were strict disciplines, however, with his mother, he had an extremely tense relationship. In his late teens, he took an interest in poetry and writing and relocated to Croatia to study journalism. Aged 21, he met his future wife Vesna, who was a law student, and they had two children together. After completing his studies, Taneski returned to his homeland and began working life at a local radio station, but by the 1980s, and for the next 20 years, was a reporter for the Skopje-based newspapers Nova Makedonia and Utrinsky Vesnik. In 2002, tragedy struck the Taneski family when his father committed suicide and his mother accidentally overdosed on medication only months later. More bad news was to follow in the next two years when in 2003, and with large financial debts already, Vlada was laid off from Nova Macedonia, and in 2004, his wife received a promotion and moved to the country's capital, Skopje. Now freelancing and also based in Kivetso, which is a small city with a low crime rate, was not easy for the local journalist, but luckily, after many years of hard work, he had gained a large following of fans of his work. Then, in 2005, he got a big story. A woman had gone missing, a local cleaner, 64-year-old cleaner Mitra Tsilyanovska. She was raped, beaten, and then strangled with a phone cable. Her dismembered body was discovered in a plastic bag in a rubbish dump in Kivetso. Two men, who had recently been found guilty of murdering a man, were found guilty of the murder of Mitra. Taneski, of course, attended the trial and wrote up an impressive report. He worked closely with local police and authorities to cover the murder, with his editor and the residents of the town praising him for his attention to detail. The killings had a respite until November of 2007, when 56-year-old Luibica Lichowska disappeared. In February, her dismembered body was discovered in a plastic bag in a different rubbish dump in Kivetso. A couple of months later, on the 16th of May, 65-year-old Zivana Temelkoska suffered the same fate as her predecessors. She had been raped, beaten, and then stabbed 13 times in the head. The killer was soon linked to the disappearance of a 78-year-old woman who went missing in 2003, never to be seen again. She fit the same victim profile as the other women. As he had with the first murder, Taneski covered them all with the same attention to detail, his column quickly becoming a crowd favourite amongst the locals. Taneski was more than keen to investigate and report on these murders. He was always centre stage. On May the 18th, just after the gruesome murder of Zivana Temelkoska, he called and pitched the story to us, recalled a reporter at the newspaper. As Taneski reported on the murders, police became increasingly suspicious. He seemed to divulge information that wasn't released in the media. In fact, 
he was disclosing information that nobody other than the killer would know. He knew exactly how the women were killed, and even the type of material they were strangled with. The body had been tied up with a piece of phone cable, with which the woman had clearly been previously strangled, read one of his reports. He openly admonished the local police for their so-called illogical suspects in the murders, and even speculated as to how the killer abducted his victims. He incessantly questioned the family members of the victims, asking them to detail their lives and their past and share their own theories of who could possibly be involved. It soon became apparent that Tanesky knew so much about the murders because he was the killer. Police arrested him and brought him to the police station for questioning and to take a DNA sample. It matched the DNA that was discovered at the crime scenes. None of his friends or colleagues could quite believe he was the killer. We are all shocked with this, said Popovsi, the editor-in-chief of Utrinsky Vesnik. I know him as an exceptionally quiet man and would never believe that he is capable of doing something like that. Tanesky's ex-wife said she enjoyed an ideal marriage with him for 31 years. The only time she could recall him being aggressive was when the couple lived with his parents, who he said to have a turbulent relationship with. His relationship with his mother worsened after his father committed suicide in 1990. The following day, Tanesky was found drowned in a bucket of water in a prison bathroom. Police determined it was suicide. Inside his cell, police found a note which read, I did not commit these murders. Tanesky took his motivation behind the murders to his grave. It is widely theorised that he was motivated by the hatred he felt for his mother. The victim's lives and physical appearance bore similarities to that of his late mother.